Hi, in this video we'll be looking at an effects rack that allows you to take control of the slices within Simpler to make uh, break beats, variations, random sequences, whatever you're up to. Let's have a quick listen to some examples, then we'll have a look at how it's put together, how it works, and finally how you can build this effects rack if you're interested. Let me explain then how the rack works and what we have here in this project. We have the, maybe turn it down a little. We have the 16 slices here in the simpler instance. We have a two bar loop running, playing this uh, slide guitar here. We have in the MIDI clip we have 16 notes each playing in this instance because there's a two bar two bar loop it's playing uh, eighth notes so we have from C1 all the way up to D sharp 2 here and each one of these corresponds to the triggers here so this is the first trigger here second here third here etc last one here triggers this one here so this plays through and triggers each of these slices here that's all that's going on you then have here effectively a method of moving the slices around so if we take slice one here it's currently playing in this position but if I move this all the way up, 60, if I transpose it 15 positions, slice one now plays this here. Can we come round? We can watch here. When it gets round to this one here, it'll play this one. Bang, here you go. So it's actually playing it twice here and at the end here. Slice one is no longer played. So I've moved the position of the slice here with this control back to zero if I wanted to I could pull them all the way down and we should only start playing the first slice there we go we'll try that there we go so that's the control we have here with the rack we're just playing all of the slices are playing the first one here now. Let's take slice two and move it up. Let's move it up four, five. Slice two now plays here. Slice three, let's move that up three. Okay, so you get the idea. You can set these how you want. And we then begin to introduce new rhythms into the, the sample that's been chopped here, sliced here. Now we also have another function, if I click here, all off. If we set all of the dials, all of the macros to the far right here, then we have a position in each of them, which turns them off. 
So that way you can generate rhythms and beats as well. You can activate these two, but the rest are turned off. That's what's going on there. Um, on the side here, I have a series of um, snapshots, which I've programmed. This one is just the bass, so this just plays through as the, the sample should. Yeah, I've got one four to the floor, maybe for drum beats. This will only play the one, the five, the nine, the 13. And then I have a series of, um, I say, different rhythms that I've programmed. This one does even odd. So the first time it does even, then it plays odd. Odd even reverse. We can reverse the sample in playback. Okay, and there's a whole series of these that I've created Hop about. Okay, so here you can save your, um, your snapshots, maybe rhythms you've programmed in here. We can also, of course, randomize. We want to generate completely unique rhythms. Then you can save them here with a snapshot, just create a new snapshot. You find a, a random sequence you, you like. Now I'm using a slide guitar here, but as you saw in the intro, this works really well with drum beats as well. You can take a sliced up break beat and rearrange it however you want, randomize it. Perhaps we could try it. Let's move this out of the way for a second. We don't need that. Let's see if we could find a, a loop. Um, let's have a look at a, a drum loop here, see if we can find a break beat. And I'll give you an example of how we set this up. Um, we'll take this one. We just drop it in. Then of course we have to go here and we have to, first of all we want to pay attention to how many bars, it's two bars. So we pay the two bar sequence here. We um, slice it, beat. We have to have 16 slices here to correspond to our macros. So we have to choose the right division. There we go. We can play it um, as a straight. This is 100 BPM, that's a little bit of luck. Okay, we can play some of these variations. Mix it up. We can randomize. Randomize again. As I say, click new if you find a rhythm you like. Record this. Um, you can reverse it. Okay, so I hope that's understandable. I think it's quite a nice rack. I'm quite happy with this one that I managed to get it to work. Took a little bit of thinking about. Um, these upper bars here, if we have longer samples, let's see if we have, uh, maybe, I don't know, we've got something here, maybe perhaps in the ambience, we might find something that's Let's take this one, let's drop this one in. This is eight bars now. If I change this to beat, and we want here probably, no, that's going to be a division. One bar of, no, that'll be half, that's correct. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. yeah, that's correct. But we're playing here an eight bar sample, but with a two bar MIDI loop. So this is speed, if I play four, we slow it down. If I play it at the correct speed, 8, that's how it should be played back. Put it on bass. Okay, so you can see here if I open this up, click this up here, sorry, like that. You can see here that I have half notes. This corresponds to the division here. If I go to something with 16 bars, this one here, 
you will see here that I'm using full bars, which would, if this was a 16 bar loop, this would correspond to the division because the division would be one bar. So that would, these here would then correspond to a, a 16 bar loop. So I hope that's understood. You need to have these set up um, to make this work. And so if we just look at this again, all it is, is very simply a sequence of notes going up by one semitone from the low C1, which corresponds to this slice, up to D sharp 2, which corresponds to the final slice. So you just have to get the, um, the division correct for the loop you want to play. Okay, so I hope that's understood. It's, um, I say, very interesting rack. We'll have a look now at how it's put together. And if you're interested, you can build it yourself. If not, I, I have all of this. I'll, I'll upload this project to my Patreon, um, including these uh, MIDI, MIDI settings here, these MIDI loops, and all of these um, snapshots that I've produced. They'll all be included as well. But anyway, let's get onto the build and have a look. Now the build's not difficult, it's just a little bit repetitive. We'll be using a, a MIDI effects rack, so what I'll do is I'll drop that in here on this MIDI channel. I'll show you the initial setup, and then we'll switch back to the original one, and I'll show you some of the settings to speed things up. So you have your MIDI effects rack here. All you're going to need to do now is to open up the macros here, drop in here a pitch, into the MIDI effects. Then we're going to go down here and click here for the chain. Let's just increase the macros. So you'll have something that looks like this. And we're going to rename this to slice one. Then we are going to set the range here to zero semitones and we are going to change this value to match C1. There we go. We would then duplicate this, right click, duplicate, and I'll just go back to this. So basically what we're saying is this 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 slice here can only play C1, has no other range. It'll only play this note. It'll only respond to this note. Sl the next one we will rename. I'm not gonna go through all of these because it would take too long, slice two. And we would set slice two now to be one semitone higher. You have to be very careful here. C sharp one, duplicate. Slice three, rename. So it's quite a bit of repetition, but you have to do this effectively 16 times. Um, next pitch. So you do this 16 times, and then once you've done that, you'd come back to the first one, and you would map here, and this one here, the pitch, to macro one. You'd go to the second one, match the pitch to macro two, Slice three, map that here to pitch to the, the third macro here. We could rename these. Slice one, oh, sorry. Okay, so you do that 16 times which then gives you 16 of these in the chain. Each one, C1, C-sharp one, D1, increasing by one semitone until you get to uh, D-sharp two. So let's switch to the original rack then, and you'll see that I have the 16 here. So if I click on the bottom one, D-sharp two, D2, C-sharp two, C2, B1. 
See, that goes all the way back down to our C1 value, and all with a range of zero semitones, each one then mapped to a macro. Right, so that's the first thing you have to do. A little bit of work, a bit tedious, but you can't avoid it. And then finally, all we have to do is map them with these settings here. So I will leave a screenshot for this. So we go into slice one here at the bottom, and we want to set the pitch range here from zero to plus 16 semitones. Slice two, minus one to plus 15 semitones. So I think the best thing is to leave this here if you're interested, and you can just copy it and map your slices to this, and then it's set up. That's all you have to do. It's really a case of these settings and the 16 pitch controls here. Um, very simple, but very effective. And once you have that, then you can um, close this all up, drop your instance of um, Simpler in here, or if you wanted to, you could also drop in a drum rack because these will correspond, if I convert this to a, um, to a drum rack, you could also drop a drum rack in here. This would play as, as well. If you wanted to be a little bit more um, sophisticated, you could go here, get a scale, drop in a scale function here, and then you could choose a scale and you could replace this with analog or any of the other instruments. You could then play here, you could set this to a scale, I don't know, bass, I don't know, anything, major, D major. And this then, when you play the slices here, they would be locked into the scale, quantized to a scale. So if you had an instrument here like drift or analog afterwards, then you could use this to control the pitches as well and randomize pitches and get sequences. That's also a possibility with this rack. But anyway, okay, I, I hope that's understood. It's a um, useful rack, a little bit tedious to set up, but useful. You save it here with this um, icon here that will save it into your user library and then presets, media effects, and you'll find it in there. You open up here the snapshots with the little camera Press new to create a new snapshot. Randomize works, nothing else to do there. That's it. Okay, anyway, thank you for watching as always. I hope this is uh, useful and enjoy the rest of the day and see you in the next one. Take care.